What causes irritable bowel syndrome? Well, if we knew that, it would not be called a syndrome. Let's discuss the theories of why IBS occurs. A syndrome indicates that we do not yet understand why a disease occurs. As we recognize patterns of symptoms that patients describe to us, we can group them into a common shared syndrome. As we tease out these symptoms, we can break patients into subtypes and start to identify underlying causes. Currently, we group irritable bowel syndrome into subtypes dependent on whether a patient has diarrhea or constipation predominant symptoms. There are currently a number of theories that are taking shape to explain why IBS occurs. The first is that a patient with irritable bowel syndrome has bowels that do not move normally. They may move too fast or too slow, and we call this a motility disturbance. A slow-moving colon causes constipation, and as that colon stretches, it causes pain, and as stool accumulates, it causes a sense of bloating and fullness. We can also understand that a patient with diarrhea may have spastic contractions that causes sharp pains. While we can understand how these motility disturbances would impact a patient's symptoms, this is not where the story of IBS ends because we do not understand why patients' bowels move too fast or too slow. The next theory is that some patients have bowels that are overly sensitive to otherwise harmless stimuli. These patients may be overly responsive to otherwise harmless stimuli that provokes an outsized response, causing bowels that move quickly and spasm with pain. For example, some patients have a strong reaction to a normal gut hormone that helps coordinate the digestion of rich fatty foods. These patients' intestines spasm with pain in response to an otherwise normal body stimulus. Nearly 70% of patients with IBS can connect a food to their symptoms, but these are not food allergies like having an anaphylactic reaction to peanut butter. These are food sensitivities and we are far from knowing all the stimuli that can provoke these outsized responses. Another theory considers that the food itself is not the culprit. Each of us breaks down food differently because working alongside of us are innumerable microorganisms, and this is the theory of the gut microbiota. If your bowels are inhabited by the wrong type of bacteria, they may break food down into byproducts that are noxious to your intestines. Just as certain smells stimulate a gag reflex or may cause you to sneeze, the byproducts of these bacteria may irritate your intestines, causing them to spasm or be stunned, causing the symptoms of IBS, pain, diarrhea, or constipation. Further theories about how our gut microbiota influences irritable bowel syndrome considers how our immune system may respond to different microorganisms. We've long known that bacteria cause infectious diarrhea. However, IBS is not an infection. We're not concerned that these microbes are invading your gut, but we believe that their presence impacts your immune system. Your intestine has a hard job. It must absorb nutrients while keeping out would-be invaders, which makes it one of the most complicated sites of our immune system. The presence of specific bacteria that we're only beginning to identify and understand may irritate your intestines, but it may also actually even soothe your immune system. And so the problem may not just simply be on the side of the microbes, it may also be on the side of your immune system being overly active. I expect our understanding of IBS will eventually solidify around concepts of the GI nervous system, the GI immune system, and the impact that the foods we eat and the microorganisms that reside in our intestines have on our gut health. We will likely come to understand the irritable bowel syndrome as a collection of different diseases with different underlying causes. And we'll probably also appreciate that most patients do not have a single cause driving their symptoms, but a medley of these theories that we have discussed. If you found this information helpful, please subscribe to the channel and be on the lookout for new information about irritable bowel syndrome. Thank you and be safe.